Iran is gearing up now uh, for retaliation because Israel exploded Syria, Iran, Iraq, in that area. So now to the report, I'm saying uh, I'm seeing that Iran activated their air defense system in Esfahan. This is that's very so Iran has fired air defense batteries aimed reports of explosion near a major air base in Esfahan uh, province, according to state media, as a regional tension rise following Iran's retaliatory strike on Israel after an attack against its consulate in Syria. So U.S. broadcaster um, ABC reported that Israel launched a missile attack against a site in Iran, citing a senior U.S. official, but there was no word from Israel and Iran on alleged attack. So things are getting very dangerous right now. And I am telling you that uh, a lot's happening in the world beside, but we want to focus on this war as this war is going to, um, I feel like is getting escalated to the point where things are not seemed the way it's supposed to be. So there's go, I'm going to bring in, um, the live news that as they are presenting this to you. So here we go. Israeli response to Iran's attack over the weekend to be limited in scope. They believe it most likely involves strikes against Iranian military forces and Iranian-backed proxies outside Iran. NBC's Richard Engel reports from Jerusalem. Israel's war cabinet is meeting yet again today for the third day in a row as Israel is trying to calibrate a response, a military response, after Iran's attack on this country with ballistic missiles, cruise missiles and drones over the weekend. The attack which failed after 99 percent of Iran's incoming fire was shot down by Israeli air defense systems with extensive help from the United States and, and other allies. But Israel is keeping the world guessing about what the response will be. Several U.S. officials telling NBC News that Israel wants to respond, will respond, and wants to respond in the short term, potentially imminently, but without provoking a wider war, leaving open the question, well, how do you do that? And will Iran agree? Will Iran see an Israeli action as calibrated or will it immediately respond and Iranian officials as of late last night were saying that any Israeli attack on, on Iran would be immediately met with an even stronger attack than Iran carried out seriously over the weekend. Yeah, so. US officials are watching this very nervously uh, apparently a final decision has not been taken and Israel Israelis themselves are divided over this issue and those uh, those cabinet meetings that have been taking place over the last uh, several days. So this is what is happening, but I want to bring you to um, So this is what happened. I'm going to bring you even to the closer that what is happening right now as um, both countries are gearing up because since Israel attack on um, Iran and uh, and their facility. So this is what now Iran is gearing up because before they said it. So here we go. Uh, we know that when it comes to the Iranian ambassador's remark, uh, he said that uh, he will focus on the escalation of the situation. Right, Sadhan, there is a... Uh... There is no damage to the Iranian nuclear facilities, according to reports. But thanks very much uh, for joining us here on the broadcast. We'll, of course, be tracking this very closely with you. All right, we're beginning with what's happening in West Asia. Iran's news agency says explosions have been heard near the airport of the country's central Isfahan city. But the reason? Still not known. Several Iranian nuclear sites are located in the Isfahan province, including Natanz. That's the centerpiece of Iran's uranium enrichment program. Iran suspended flights over the cities of Isfahan, Shiraz and Tehran. On Thursday, a senior Iranian Revolutionary Guard commander said Iran could review its nuclear doctrine following Israeli threats. The remarks raised concerns about Tehran's nuclear program, which it says has always been strictly for peaceful purposes. Amid spiraling tensions, the Guard's commander in charge of the nuclear security 
hit out at Tel Aviv. He said if the Zionist regime wants to take action against our nuclear centers and facilities, we will reciprocate with advanced missiles against their own nuclear sites. Addressing officials from the Mossad and Shin Bet in Tel Aviv. So this is getting escalated because this threat is now, they're taking it to the next level of threats. And not just only, now they are talking about nuclear. And that's where it's getting absolutely crazy that uh, they are now looking into the option of uh, nuking each other. And, you know, the United States sitting back there and, and analyzing both situations, because as you know, that Joe Biden made it very clear and uh, also Kamala Harris not too long ago mentioned that um, when the reporter asked, what should Israel do in retaliation what, uh, to the ro over 300 rockets that was sent uh, to Israel to mainland attack from the mainland of Iran? And Kamala Harris said, simply don't. And uh, and, and the, the word was thinking about like she's going to say more, but she said don't. That's the word uh, to the Israelites, uh, Israel war cabinet. And now you see that uh, there is whether U.S. involvement in this right now as immediately or not. But at the same time, we are, I feel like, heading in that direction where U.S. Is, might end up, I'm not saying 100%, but might end up getting involved fully, full-fledged war. Uh, that's what we are speculating here. Military action against Iran, against the territory of Iran, against the national interests of Iran, will be responded, will be responded, by Iranian military force. All right, for more on this, we have Beyond's principal diplomatic correspondent, Sidhan Sibyl, joining us live on this broadcast. Sidhan, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, one. According to reports, explosions have been heard near Iran's central Isfahan city, several Iranian nuclear sites located here as well. Talk to us about what has happened, the level of alert in Iran, and the concerns as well. Well, Hame, uh, it is a developing story. We have seen uh, some ish initial uh, uh, media saying, uh, Western media basically, that uh, strikes have taken place. Now, there are reports coming from the Iranian media as well, certain visuals as well. But all in all, uh, it is easy to say that uh, the situation in West Asia remains precarious. Now, the Iranian ambassador spoke to Beyond exclusively yesterday evening. And he said that if there is an escalation from the Israeli side, there will be a strong response from the Iranian side. Now, does that mean that the region will be engulfed in a conflict? Yes, it looks like clearly. But of course, what are Indian stakes? So, okay, I appreciate that uh, for this. Um, but I want to uh, take you to where the Western media is talking about, because of course, this media outlets that I just reviewed it to you that went to Iran and sat down a um, to the to the general commander of Iran aside to ask them but they said like hey foreign ministers mentioned it very sound and clear if Israel attack any further then we are going to straight up you know gonna attack and we also gonna look at the nuclear option as well so I want to bring on uh this uh from Fox News and um uh, what Fox News is saying. So here we go. Respondent Griff Jenkins, he's live for us at the White House. Griff, what are we learning out of there tonight? Okay. Hey, good evening, Trace. Well, we know now that the lights are dark in the Oval Office. Not a lot of activity here, but from our White House correspondent, Jackie Heinrich, we have now learned a U.S. government official confirming to her that the Israel strike happened in yeah. Iran, that mm -hmm. the White House was not involved, the U.S. was not involved, and that the U.S. received pre-notification from Israel. But Trace, it's been... The, the reason the United States did not get involved right away, as his gentleman is mentioning, is because the Biden administration made it very clear to Israelis, hey, if you go up uh, because no rockets fallen on your you know, ground and no destruction happened, let it go. Don't respond because let's dis de escalate and, and review further options of diplomatic and how we can you know solve this without it going further. But now look at this right now, that Israel, despite what was said by the Biden administration, they went ahead and struck 
the nuclear facilities of Iran in near, you know, Asfan city. And now the Iranian uh, air defense is active there. So I want to bring that back to you. Been a busy day with respect to Iran here at the White House. There was that meeting with the National Security Council, a meeting led by Jake Sullivan between U.S. and Israeli security officials, where we were told in a readout that the topic of discussion largely involved the uh, planned offensive in Rafah, and that Sullivan shared the U.S. concerns over measures that might be taken, and that Israel noted those. We now perhaps can uh, defer, uh, infer from that that they talked a little bit about this. Uh, an interesting note, when the president returned to the White House from his trip in Philadelphia today, uh, just before 5 o'clock, the president, Corinne Jean-Pierre, and staff members did not go into the residence, which is normally what would happen. They went straight into the Oval Office, perhaps to discuss this. But some of the other things that happened here today, and in addition to that meeting with the NSC, was the announcement of the... So this is uh, exactly what is happening today, ladies and gentlemen. This is not an old news. This is a new news that is following up because Israel just attacked the Iranian facility, nuclear facility. And where, um, you know, Iran news outlets is saying there's no much um, damage happened there. But if Israel uh, continue, I don't, I don't know if they will respond that, but that's what we want to see because their air defense system is just, you know, activated. And let's see what uh, New, uh, uh, New York has to say or the New York Times has to say or the CNN has to say. But the CNN is uh, simply saying that Israel has attacked Iran and U.S. officials tell CNN and also, let's dive deep into Iran state media reports no major disrupt disruptions to Esfan's infrastructure because that's what was attended to. Uh, maybe that's a soft target or maybe that's just a, just a retaliation, quick retaliation. But there is a huge bomb of explosion heard near Iraq. And th that's I, I don't know if that's in Damascus right around this area. But Iran, Iraq, and and then into Isfahan um, province of Iran. That's where they heard. Following a strike in Iran's Isfahan province, Iranian state media are now reporting that all the facilities in the area are secure, including sig significant nuclear facilities. So I'm I'm just thinking about it because uh, uh, to American media, to American minds. That we all were thinking about and all time along when Obama was in the office that that, you're, uh, that Iran is not going to develop nuclear weapon. Iran is not going to develop nuclear weapon. But now I'm thinking about where is that nuclear weapon is coming from? You know, where is that is is, is coming from uh, the several facilities that uh, the Iranian foreign minister stated that if the... Israelis were to attack over uh, uh, nuclear facilities, we are going to attack back their uh, nuclear facilities. So that's where uh, the the questions lie, that if they all that time along for the U.S., for the U.S. strategy was to give $600 billion to Iran for to prevent them from not developing a nuclear or maybe give them a little bit of uranium so they don't have the max level of uranium to to keep the peace but the ultimate goal was to have iran not ever acquire a nuclear weapon why because they thought it was uh, dangerous for the region it was also for the sake of the peace in the region as well united states want to make sure that iran don't get access to the u nuclear uh, uh, weapon. But what is now we are seeing that a lot of the people in the politician era or in the politician uh, atmosphere were criticizing Republican Party and Democratic. The, we're both uh, fighting over this because what if, if Iran is lying and they're still going to get access to a nuclear? What about if they still wants to take this money and develop the nuclear weapon anyway? What kind of deal is that? You know, because this is like not a good deal. And then when Trump got in there, he just canceled out this detail de deals and just go on that straight up. Iran, you're not going to have a nuclear weapon.
because it's not safe, safe for the Middle East and it's not safe for the nation of Israel. But now the threats is coming out. And I want I want want to see also prophetically what is happening right now, because prophetically this region, this whole prophecy is uh, unveiling before our eyes that Israel will be attacked. And if you remember, I don't know if you remember or not, eclipse, recent eclipse and solar eclipse, where you see a, 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 right after the eclipse, the, the, the circumstance, the environments begin to change. And that's where I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, that step by step, bit by bit, instead of things getting de-escalated, they are being escalated to the point that where each nation, both sides, Iran and Iraq, they want to tear them down. But of course, like we need to have adults in the home. I have seen previous wars and war, you know, nobody wins war at the end of the day. But at the same time, countries need to respect each other's sovereignty. Because when you see on the other side, when you attack a sovereign country, what do you expect in, re uh, in return? A bouquet of flower, of course they're gonna hand you bomb and that, that as well. So that's where I want to point to those people that are watching right now. That overall impressions that being related by the Iranian government and other media outlets in Iran is that whatever it has happened, and they do leave it rather ambiguously, it has not damaged significant significantly any important facility near Isfahan. And uh, as you know, that state media is also reporting that of state media of Iran. And I don't know if that is going to be it because there is no any significant destruction happened. But in the history for since a very long time, this was the very first time that Iran have ever attacked directly to Israel from their mainland. Because as you watched in the news, uh, through um, Hezbollah in Lebanon and through um, uh, Hamas and from the Palestine that they said that Iran sponsored it to these attacks to carry out against uh, Jewish people, against the nation of Israel. So this is now is the very first time recorded in the history that Iran directly attacked Israel from their main line. Over 300 rockets, ladies and gentlemen, think about it. Over 300 rockets here in the United States, what would be the uh, response of the United States military? They want to go after those people who are doing this. But at the same time, Israel is a small country the size of a New Jersey uh, and, and it's not very large. And over, uh, I think, millions of people are there presented, Jew, uh, Arabs, and Christians, and Greeks, they are there. So total population, uh, I am checking right now, of, of Israel. It's about 9 million, right under 10 million mark. That is the total population. Even the state of Texas is close to 29 million populations. Think about it, that when you, it is easy to target things, but at the same time, God actually, I believe, truly given Israel a technology and the dome of, and then also Iron Dome that prevent from rockets falling right into Israel. And this is very important, very urgent that as Iran gears up and see what is their next move, because Iranian media is certainly downplaying this is incident. According to the state TV, three small unknown flying objects were intercepted near the city of Isfahan just after 4 a.m. local time. The Iranian air defense systems were able to intercept and destroy those flying objects, state TV said, right? The location in Isfahan prevents an Iranian military air base that belongs to the country's army and not the Revolution Guards, I think. It's important to highlight that that this base house houses multiple uh, uh, drones of F-14 Timecat uh, fighter air aircraft because this is a facility. This is a major their basis. This facility is also located near the Isfahan airport, and also a result of all this, officials have now cleared the Iranian skies. Flights have been canceled. 
And if there is no major destructions happen, why the flights are canceled, why there is no ins and outs of flights operations happening right now, it's because I truly believe and also as reading into these news and doing my due diligence, re due diligent research that there has been a mass destruction, but at the same time, they are downplaying it. Maybe that's a sign of de-escalation or maybe that's a sign of manipulating the media to, 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 uh, to it at the back, maybe come with the bigger targets than what Israelites have done. Because think about it. Wars happen not at the base of like de-escalating, but at the, at the, at the point of escalating to the point where they are declaring war on a nation. Israel side, they have not declared war. On Iran side, they have not officially declared war that Iran is in the war in a war with Israel. Why do I say that? It's because since they are downplaying the situations that Isfahan city been strict is stricken, uh, the strike happened uh, by the Israel uh, Israelite um, air. But they are not acknowledging the destruction. Why? Because they might want to downplay, so they might want to back off. And I don't believe it that as a time as such as this, that the Iran is going to back off. Why do I say that? Because this is the very opportunity they might be waiting on to coming out with all the other allies to come against to the nation of Israel. And maybe Turkey get involved. I don't know if Turkey is going to get involved or not. But Turkey has been on a very high alert. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, Turkey been on a very high alert because Erdogan has hosted Hamas in Turkey uh, uh, numerous times. He did. He did hosted Hamas in Turkey. In, uh, and then he spoke to them. And he has this uh, connections uh, with them. And also, I'm looking on this, this uh, news page that Qatar-based Palestinian terror leaders to visit Istanbul uh, days after meeting with Turkish foreign minister in Qatar. And Turkish President Erdogan said Wednesday that he will host I Ishmael, uh, uh, the Qatar-based leader of Hamas in Turkey this weekend. So he is also going to host the in, in Turkey, the Hamas leader, the leader of the Palestine cause will be my guest this week. And that's what he said. He's I, I know they are against Israel. They might not talk to Israel or have any sort of dialogue with Israel because Turkey is part of NATO. <clears throat> and why wouldn't they talk? Because at some point, Turkey is also a ally of uh, the United States. That's what my understanding is. If, we, if you're part of a NATO that NATO is one nation's attack, and that means all nations attack. And if if uh, Turkey decide to play uh, from the side of Iran, uh, Iran, then that could be a violation of like attacking their allies. That's what I'm thinking about it. So uh, even I think that's a mistake on the Erdogan uh, side. Or, uh, he shouldn't like be meeting with like he should instead of um, taking a side. He should release a statement that detention should be um, should be de-escalated between the both nations instead of escalated. But if they decide not to de-escalate, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to say it very loud and clear, Syria, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, and uh, hold that region especially the countries that bordered with uh, Iran are going to come together and they are going to go after Israel. And before you know, they will be attacking Israel. And I don't know, in prophecy, in prophecy they have mentioned, in prophecy they have mentioned my Russia joined, my North Korea, China might go, and that might go well into Gog Magog war. And that's what Bible talked about it. But then when that happens, Gog Magog war, the hand of God will come on the nation of Israel, which is the size of New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, which is the size of New Jersey is a small nation under 10 million people. And the hand of God might come on the nation of Israel and rescue Israel from the nation of all the enemies nation even the us 
U.S. tried their best, but look at the administration. The United States administration, Biden administration, made it loud and sound and clear that, hey, nation of Israel, if you respond, you will go alone. You will be on your own with this strike. We helped you with, with the, the rockets that they were fired at you. There is supposed to be ironclad relationship bond between Israel and the United States of America. But if the United States of America, I feel, feel like that we are coming into a time, Esther moment. United States is an Esther to the nation of Israel. And, and Mordecai, you know, there is the prophets are saying to the United States that please don't leave on the side of Israel because if you leave, God will protect this nation, but God will deal you, with you later on. And that's what we need to keep in our mind. That's what we need to be mindful of it. If God is on the side of Israel, we should be on the side of Israel as well. It is not a time or a season for the United States as such as this time. There is earthquakes is happening. Did you even know that there's a volcano erupting? in the nation of Indonesia. If that volcano falls into the oceans, that could create a giant tsunami. And earthquakes, there is a there was an earthquake in Japan for 6.8 magnitude earthquake. And Japan literally was shaking like this, the whole nation of Japan. There have been stronger earthquakes that are coming. There is solar eclipse. There is a war already unrest in the east europe with between the uh, between ukraine and russia there's also tension going on and as you know north korea is not alone either because they are also threatening the united states north korea is threatening iran is also threatening to the uh, the united states that they might end up going after the bases where the u.s presence is overseas they might use their connections to go after the United States facilities if the United States continue to help Israel. And this is what I, I don't know why I, I have to say this now. United States nation, it's the obvious thing, is a powerful, strong, superpower nation. Nobody on the planet of the earth can match the firepower of the United States. Why can't United States can't stand up to the to 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 Iran. Why? Because we have a weak leadership. Because the leadership we have, they just want to like. It's not about like instigating and getting uh you know things stir up. But at the same time, to send a clear message that hey, enough is enough. Cut it off. Or we gonna get involved. It's gonna be very messy situation. But I think when when the when you don't send out a message like this, this then it gives other nations empowerment that hey united states is weak israel is weak and that's why it is important for us to to not give into a propaganda that is brewing up right now there's a propaganda is brewing up ladies and gentlemen let me tell you that propaganda is to show united states is weak but i'm telling you god is if for you then who can stand against there is so many believers in the united states that believe that we have a favor of god over the united states of america and united states of america and the israelites they have to stand close they have to stay in that bond with each other because that's what it meant to be united states is a new israel united states is a, a nation on the hill and blessed by god there is no enemy that can take this and that's not a surprise that United States, a majority of uh, all the, it's covered uh, with Canada, Mexico, but then others on the other end, United States is surrounded by the ocean, very hard to attack. But at the same time, God has his protection over the United States of America. I want to give people opportunity. Let me know where you guys are watching from. I want to acknowledge you on this broadcast, and I want to acknowledge all the people that are watching on the Vision Television Network and also across the planet. Because right now we are in a very urgent time that we need to keep this in mind, that sh time is shifting. 
that where you know you don't know what exactly happened. I want to bring you to the before you leave. This is a recent strike happened. You know, Israel just attacked Iran, and the the time of Israel, Israel, Iran warns. This is what I want to bring bring to your news. If you can share this, I would really appreciate it. If you don't want to share it, no hard feelings. But I want to bring this the Israeli Times news over to you because this is very important. You got to take a look at it. So here we go. So. So Iran warns it may re revise its nuclear doctrine threats to hit Israel nuclear side. Did you see that? And and there was a leaders that were sitting here in the United States of America. I was thinking that Iran, some of the leaders, I don't say all of them, people are thinking about it, that they might not hit, Iran might never hit Israel. But ladies and gentlemen, Iran has been in the prophecy. Iran could hit Israel with a nuke. Why do I say that? Because their ambitions, very um, sort of a, uh, manipulative, you know, nation, because they are in this for a while. And look at this guy it looks so angry, this, this general of Iran. And, you know, like when Trump was in the office, that was not the problem that we had. But now since Trump is gone, now we're seeing all this garbage that's coming forth. You tell Iran the name of Jesus and it will bow down to the name above all. Yes, I know. With the faith, we can do great things. Great wonders, miracles can happen. But at the same time, God gave us a wisdom to handle situations in a very wise way. We can't be giving into, into the camp of enemy. We can't go into the camp of enemy and say that, Oh, I am sorry. I didn't mean to be here. But if God sent you into the camp, camp of enemy, it's time to respond back and respond back harder. But at the same time, we need to do it with wisdom, not with emotions. When you do it with the wisdom of God, when God is with you, when God is giving you a clear path, you can compound on that. You can take advantage of that. But if any time nation of Israel went into, thank you so much for coming on North Carolina. Let me know where you guys are watching from. I want to know every single person that under the sound of my voice. I want to know where you guys coming on, on from. I want to acknowledge you on this broadcast. Anytime. Think about it. I was talking earlier about the wall of Jericho. Massive wall of Jericho. And then when God sent the Israelites, they encamped right there. And then there was a shofar. There was a pipe. There was a dancing of it happening. And God said, go around seven times to the wall of Jericho. And when you blast, you know, the pipe, the walls will come down. And it was God leading them. God have given Israelites so many victory over the enemy's nation because God was with them. And I truly believe that we are in a time and era that God is doing miraculous on the planet of the earth. And God is not yet done with the nation of Israel and with America. God is going to strike the enemy. And the Bible talks about those who bless, God will bless. Those who curse, God will curse. And I heard not too long ago that Iran doesn't have a lot of money. Uh, Iran doesn't have money to, to handle the destruction because... They don't have a budget, a war budget. And and that is a very, very scary thing. And that's why I said it's times both nations, it's better to de-escalate the situation. But if that doesn't happen, if Iran takes, because Israel just struck the, uh, the province of uh, Esfahan. And in that province of Esfahan, there was a military base and also nuclear sites of Iran were in that place. But if, if I'm saying, if Iran don't retaliate, Israel will not go further. But if Iran going to do something, then this could lead into World War III. Why do I say that? Because if they keep hitting each other back and forth, what do you think is going to happen? You know, and that's why, this is has to 
this this has to be de-escalated very very fast hey mandy how are you i thank you so much uh, for coming on on this broadcast let me know where you guys watching from before i leave i want to acknowledge each and every one of you that who can hear this sound of my voice i would really appreciate it if you can do that please let me know where you guys watching from and uh, put your name right below i want to acknowledge you on this broadcast before i leave and um Come on, everybody. Hurry up. <laughs> I'm saying hurry up. All right. I have um, Mexico in the house. And I don't know who else is watching right now. Hey, how you doing? I'm in Texas. Hey, awesome, awesome. Yes, praise the Lord. Uh fear mongering. I know this is fear mongering, but think about it. I am even encouraging people believe in God, trust in God. And think about it. If you go on another news channel, they are absolutely fear mongering. But let's, uh, let's, uh, if you have not accepted Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I would love to lead you into prayer. Say this after me, Lord Jesus, I confess my sin and I give my life to you. I know I'm sinner, but through the blood of Jesus Christ, I am, my sins is washed away. I am a new creation in Jesus Christ. And I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ is the Lord and the Savior of my life. I'm telling you, if you pray this prayer after me, you're born again. Good, find a good Bible-based church and start your relationship with Jesus Christ. And also make sure you get it baptized. Because if you want the Holy Spirit to come on you, you have to be baptized. And that's so important. And um, yeah, I, I, this is what exactly I want. Nothing happened. I, this is what I want. Nothing to happen. But at the same time, as I'm bringing this news to you, there is a lot happening in the Middle East. Because Turkey, Iraq, I want to even bring you into Iraq. What is happening in Iraq? Let's bring you in Iraq. So what's the prime minister of Iraq is saying? The prime minister heads to Michigan. That's what's going to happen. Heads to Michigan to meet Arab Americans at the tents uh, for the Middle East. Why would he go to, you know, uh, Michigan? Because this is where the biggest population of, um, of, uh, of Arabs are. So he's going there and uh, he's going to meet there. And then um, the leader of Iraq traveled to Michigan on Thursday following a sit-down with a President Joe Biden to meet with the state's large Iraqi community and update them on escalate and escalating tension in the Middle East following Iran's weakened aerial assault on Israel. Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammed Shia uh, Ol Shudani trip to both Washington and Michigan to discuss U.S.-Iraq relationship and had been planned well before Saturday drones and missiles launched from Iran's back group. The visit has been uh, thrust into the spotlight as tension in the region escalating following the strike, which included drone and missiles launch that overflew Iraqi airspace. So, yeah. You wouldn't like it if the missiles are flying all over you. So, yeah, you wouldn't like it. Hey, thank you so much, Charles, for coming from Huntsville. Thank you so much from uh, Rancho Cucamonga, uh, California. And Karen, thank you so much from Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, thank you so much. Hey, make sure, Karen, subscribe to this channel uh, since you are new on here. I will really appreciate it. Um, and that would be wonderful. And I want to also check on Syria. What is happening in Syria? These are, as you know, these are very, very sensitive situations that we are right now in because um, live update I saw from the Middle East where in Isfahan, the air defense system in Isfahan was um, activated. And that's I'm talking about on the end, uh, on the side of uh, of Iran. So let's see if this is, I don't want this to go any further, any longer, because this is uh, getting very in a 
ridiculous situation. So Syria is right here. I want to bring this map over to you guys so you can take a look at it. So this is right here. Uh, let me bring this map on the screen. Okay, let me know if you guys can watch it. All right. So right here on the screen, you see this is Iran right here. This is Afghanistan. And um, this is Iraq because if Israel is going to, uh, you know, send missiles, it's going to fly over Iraq into Tehran. So Tehran is right there. Azerbaijan is, Georgia is right there. And then you talk about uh, Beirut, Lebanon is right there. So Israel, Kuwait is right here, Iraq, Iran. So all this nation, Turkey is right there. And then uh, Jordan's right there. And Saudi Arabia is right here, which is Saudi Arabia. I consider it to be um, a superpower of Middle East. But um, anyhow, all these nations are there, and uh, Israel is surrounded with them. Some are, some are, I think, little bit are friendly, and some are not very so much. But at the same time, we need to start praying right about now because situations are getting a little bit. And see. Well, thank you so much uh, for coming on this broadcast. And uh, I 